Hi everyone, so in this video we are going to talk about something extremely important that is what tech stacks you learn right now, what tech stacks should you learn right now if you want to get a job. And I know this is something that confuses a lot of people, this is a question that plagues the minds of freshers and college students alike. So let's have a discussion on this because even in my top mate calls I always have someone asking me, Bhaiya should we do Merm stack, should we do Java full stack? which is going to give us a higher package, which is going to give us a job, which is going to give us, you know, an AI proof job or future proof job. So people keep asking these things and we're going to have a good discussion on this topic. And I'm going to tell you the exact facts and I'm not going to be diplomatic about it. Like most people saying that both are good, pick yourself. No, I'm going to give you guys my exact opinion at the end of the video so that you guys can make up your mind after that yourself, right? But before even that, on what authority am I talking about this? You know, who am I to speak on this basically? So first of all, I've been working in the industry for the past three to four years. And apart from that, I have friends in pretty much every company all over the world. I've made so many podcasts, I have so many friends in different companies. So I have a good idea about market. And even apart from that, I do market research on a daily basis. I've been doing so for the past six months. You guys can see on my channel, I've been making videos daily about the companies hiring and what kind of skills they're looking for. So I have a good idea about the companies that are hiring and what do they look for in a fresher or in a college student or in a fresh grad. Okay, so based on that, I'm going to talk, be talking about it and I'm going to be speaking facts on the basis of that. Okay, so let's get into it and we're going to have a look at it from every possible angle. We're not going to leave any possible angle, right? So you're going to have good clarity on everything. Let's start with the first perspective. That is the learning curve. I know a lot of people will be wondering, what is the learning curve? You know, is Merm stack easier? Is Java full stack easier? First of all, let me tell you that you should not be picking something based on how easy it is or how difficult it is. That is not something that should be altering your decision of picking something just based on the difficulty. Okay. You should not be picking something just because it is easy. You should not be skipping on something just because it is difficult. But that being said, I have seen that Merm stack comes easier to people. I have seen if someone is a fresher and they go into Merm stack versus they go into Java full stack, Merm somehow becomes a bit easier to understand. Okay. Because of course you start with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you get comfortable with JavaScript, you go into React, you go into Node and it all comes into a natural flow. But if you go into Java full stack, it becomes a bit difficult to understand. So Merm stack comes off easy especially to a beginner that's what i have seen and java comes off a bit more difficult to implement but again this is something that is a one-time investment right once you learn this you're never gonna forget it you can keep revising so it is a one-time investment right but the learning curve to put it simply is easier in one stack it is more steep or more difficult in java full stack okay now that is about the learning curve now let's talk about the industry which is something that of course you guys want to know which companies are hiring for Merge? which companies are hiring for java which is having more demand let's talk about it see both has demand because i've been doing industry research i've been doing market research and i can clearly tell you both have demand but in different domains the demand is in different domains if you guys are looking for startups if you guys see startups most of the companies that are new and i'm not talking about you know lala companies i'm not talking about bad startups i'm talking about good startups startups that have good work culture good pay good scope those kind of startups also survive and work on Merm. but if you take a look at the big tech companies you know the big players the fintech companies the high paying companies they are basically working on java most of the companies most of the ppc's big tech companies are working on java this is something that i can back up with so many so many examples you know, like I can give you a list of companies that work on Java. You can search up the list of companies that work up in that work with Java and you'll see most of your dream companies in that list. Okay. But that doesn't mean that Mernstack is not being used in the industry. A lot of startups, good startups, high paying startups do use Mern, especially in the initial phase. And afterwards, uh, many of them migrate towards Go or many of them migrate towards Java. Let's take TUF for example, right? TUF just migrated to Go. Okay. So that is about the industry standards. And of course, most of you guys may already be knowing about it. That Merm is more for startups, Java is more for big tech. Does it mean that every big tech uses Java? Does it mean that no startup uh, uses Java? Or does it mean that no big tech uses Merm? It's not like that. It's not a 100% case. There will be startups using Java. There will be big tech companies using JavaScript based technology. So it's not 100-100. Of course, you'll have a little bit up and down, but for majority of the case, this is how it's going to be. Okay, so this is about the industry demand. Now let's talk about the salary discussion, right? 
So, see, there can never be accurate data about this because nobody has gone on and taken a survey of all the developers in the world. So, you can never trust the data on salary discussions, right? You always have to take it with a grain of salt, right? But based on my experience, speaking solely from my experience, I have seen Java developers make a little bit more because if you take average, most of the Java devs are working at a high paying company. And most of the Monstack developers will be working at startups or companies that may not match the pay of a big tech company. So definitely in my experience, I have seen Java developer make more, not significantly, but a little bit more than Monstack developers. Now, by this point, you might be seeing the video and you might be asking yourself, Kiyashish, are you trying to sell us Java? Are you trying to you know, just say that Java is better. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. Okay. And of course, let me also make that clear. I do not have any course to sell you. I know a lot of people do Merne versus Java because they have a hidden agenda of selling a course. You can check my entire YouTube channel. I do not have a course on either Merne or Java, right? So whatever I'm saying does not have a hidden agenda, does not have an ulterior motive to sell you guys any course. But this is the fact that I have been looking at for so long. Right. So that's pretty much it about the industry trends and all. Now let's come into what should you do? What do you actually do? You might be confused. You might be solidified in your head or you might be just, you know, weakly solidified that, okay, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do that. But not a lot of people have conviction that this is what they should choose. So let me give you guys the conviction. Let me help you guys build the conviction. Let's take a look at full stack first, right? What is full stack? Full stack is front end, back end and everything in between. Right. And of course, full stack is a good way to go into development. I highly recommend going into full stack compared to AI, ML, data and all those things. I recommend go into full stack, start full stack because full stack has a lot of scope. Pretty much every company will be looking for a full stack developer at some point. And of course, you will get hired as a full stack developer. So how do you start? See, forget about back end for the time being. Let's focus on the front end. What is there in front end? If you're learning front end, you start with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. JavaScript is there. In front end, JavaScript is there. You cannot avoid JavaScript. So you learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And after that, you learn a framework like React, Vue, Angular, Next.js. Again, all JavaScript based. So there is no escaping JavaScript. That's what I'm trying to say. Whether you're going to Java full stack, whether you're going to Merge, whether you're going to whatever, front end is dominated by JavaScript based technologies. You're going to have to learn JavaScript based technologies. So you have to learn JavaScript. You start with front end HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Let's say you learn React. Good. Half, first half, no confusion. Just do this. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, learn React. I'll give you guys the resources. No confusion. Now we come into backend. No JS, JavaScript based, or you have Spring Boot, the ultimate framework, Java based. Now there's a confusion in backend. What should we go for? So I'll give you guys a way to understand this. Of course, you have JavaScript, right? And Node.js is also in JavaScript. So like I said, it comes into a flow. So you might be thinking now, why should we go into Java, right? Why should we go into Java and learn everything all over again and then learn Spring Boot? What is the advantage of that? So I'll tell you, you have to do DSA as well. Let's take DSA into the equation for a while. So you cannot do DSA in JavaScript. You can, but it's not recommended. I highly recommend doing DSA in a language like Java, C++, or Python even, not JavaScript, right? Now, C++ and Python, there's not much scope for in development. So we have Java left. So I recommend you guys to start DSA in Java. In parallel, you're doing development, now start DSA in Java. Once you start learning DSA in Java, you're going to learn Java, of course, and you'll have Java in your resume. So now you have front-end JavaScript base, you have Java in your resume. Well and good, you're already dabbling a little bit of both. Now you can make a decision because you know Java, you know JavaScript. Now you can make a decision based on the facts you already know. You can go for Node.js or you can go for Java Spring Boot. But my recommendation to you is going to be go with Java Spring Boot. Okay, you already have done DSA in Java. Now you can learn a little bit of advanced concepts. Now you can learn, you know, a bit depth about Java and then you can start learning Spring Boot. For Spring Boot also, I'll give you a lot of resources. Now you know Spring Boot well. You make a couple of projects using React front end and Spring Boot backend. Now you have one good full stack project in your resume. But imagine you want to learn Node suddenly. Imagine you want to go into a startup suddenly, which is asking for Node.js. It's not a loss because you already know JavaScript and now learning Node.js is not going to be that difficult. So this is the way I am going to suggest for you guys. Front end, there's no confusion. After you do front end, learn Java, 
do DSA if you haven't already, start doing DSA and then slowly, slowly, slowly transition into Spring Boot and make a good project using React and Spring Boot. That I would say is a deadly combination of tech stack, which will give you a lot of scope. But again, if you're going for startups, Node.js, they will ask. So you can learn Node.js, but I don't recommend learning both at the same time. It's going to be very bad for you guys. Trust me, <laughs> you'll get so much confusion. Learn React, Spring Boot, make some high quality projects, become good in DSA. That alone is going to be pretty good for you. But if you want to go into Node.js, that is also completely fine. There is a lot of scope. It's not that Node.js is dead or there's no company using JavaScript based framework. No, nothing like that. A lot of people who make courses on Spring Boot will tell you Mern is dead. <laughs> Nobody is using Mern. And they will, you know, make you believe that Java is the ultimate thing. Forget everything apart from Java. It's not like that. Mern is being used in the industry. Today only I posted about three companies. All of them were looking for Mern stack developers, right? So it's not that Mern is bad. But my recommendation will be to learn frontend and dribble into Java Spring Boot. That is what I am going to recommend. This is my personal opinion, my personal recommendation. Okay, so if you want to argue on that, then my LinkedIn DMs are open. We can have a healthy discussion. We can have a good discussion on there. But this is my opinion. Okay, now, of course, tracking a big tech company is not easy. You're going to have to be good in DSA. And if you're a college student, you're going to have to do a lot of things. Only then you'll be able to crack a big tech company. Cracking a startup is going to be easier. So what I recommend is that you also get an internship at a startup experience. So self-paced projects, now you're working at Spring Boot. Once you get internship experience at a startup company, you might be learning more about JavaScript-based technologies. So you'll be having best of both worlds. Okay, you can have your cake and eat it too. So you'll have best of both worlds and it's going to be great for you. Okay, so try to get an internship experience at a startup. So you'll understand and try to make self-paced projects in Java Spring Boot and of course the front-end technologies, whatever you're using. Okay, so this is about it and a bonus thing I want to discuss because a lot of people even ask you what about other tech stacks? You have Django, you have Ruby, you have Go. What about the other tech stacks, right? So if I'm being honest with you, I have not seen Django or other tech stacks being used in a lot of, I mean, they are used, don't get me wrong, they're used. I haven't seen them being used in job skills or job filtering for a long time. I have seen most jobs on Mern or Java. I have not seen that many jobs on uh, you know other frameworks so that's why i only made the video of discussing about these two i didn't make the video about django also so that's what this is about right burn or java because these are having scope others don't even have that much scope right this is still the best thing to do either going to java or burn okay and of course once you get into the company you can go into front end or back end but you have to start off as a full stack developer okay so that's pretty much it i've digressed so much on this video I have uh, blabbered on, yapped on so much in this video. I hope I didn't confuse you guys. But if anything is still confusing, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll be very happy to respond to you there. And we can always have a healthy discussion either in the comment section or on LinkedIn DM or you can email me. Anything is fine. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's not make this video any longer than it needs to be. Hope it clarified some of your doubts. If not, please feel free to leave a comment. And let's see you guys in the next video.